Would you say that there is sufficient awareness of the role played by crisis management on the part of organisations in terms of its ability to preserve their reputation in crisis? We need to be able to break down what we mean by reputation, first of all. Reputation for what and with whom? It's too easy to say reputation, actually. We'll have different reputations with customers, suppliers and consumers, so it's worth breaking it down. We can also challenge those reputational expectations. We can communicate better during a crisis, perhaps, and improve our perception. So that's one issue around just the reputation one. Is there enough time spent by senior management? The question is actually about integration across an entire business, because senior management can't act alone. They need to be supported by management teams, by operational teams, so they must be integrated. And then finally, do they understand their roles and responsibilities? Again, do this through actual exercising, because understanding only really comes by doing it. Horizon scanning can be an incredibly powerful and effective tool in understanding what risks we're going to be facing over the coming months or indeed years. But there are certain industries better at it than others because of the nature of their background. Safety critical industry has been very good at understanding what are the safety issues that are coming on the horizon for them. Uh, regulation helps in terms of understanding what's coming to change the way we do business. But that said, Organizations are being faced with challenges on their resources, their finances. They can't spend lots of time doing things which are seen to provide very little value back into an organization. So actually, driving horizon scanning is quite a challenge. But to make it effective, to make it powerful, if you integrate it with your risk management, you integrate it with your crisis management and business continuity, you can start to see some real feedback into the organization of saying, this is what's coming, this is how we should worry about it, but this is what we can do about it and actually be positive about these things. The new media paradigm is a fascinating place. You will have to accept now all stories are social and all stories are global. They're there, available on a global basis, on demand, being reported on by non-professionals, consumers just like you or I who might have access to the internet via Facebook and Twitter. These things are out there. We can't change that. What we can do is try to reflect on it and how we might both use it and um, respond to it. And actually there are ways of using it quite effectively. If we want to get a message out to consumers in a way that they are not going to get through a standard press release, the social media is incredibly powerful for doing that. If we want to interact with our consumers in a way that means we get actual feedback in almost real time, crowdsourcing of what the problem is and solutions to it, it can be incredibly powerful. But there is a realization, there has to be a realization that we can't change the fact that the social media exists. And we have to work out how we're going to relate to it. That's not just communications, it's not just crisis communications, but as an entire organization, what does it mean for us? Leadership in a crisis is a challenge, I mean, there's no doubt about that. But there are a series of skill sets which can be trained into, uh, into managing professionals, people who've grown up through the business, understanding the organization, managing through the organization, who, who can be built upon. They can be built with the right skills, team working, decision making under stress, decision making without full facts. These are skill sets which can take time to master and be trained into individuals. But on top of that, there has to be behaviors. They have to have positive interactive behaviors so that they're engaging, they're communicative, they're not bringing an ego to the table and being destructive or limiting on the capability of the team. So actually it's quite difficult to say what is one set of skills, what is one set of behaviors that brings us to the right leader because different organizations will need different things. But actually what we need to do is focus on a skill set and then a series of behaviors backed up by the organization in terms of what they want to do, what they want to achieve and the values of the business. To get a positive crisis response or a crisis strategy it takes a lot of time and effort. It can't be done on the fly, on the hoof, when the crisis is actually running. It's just not going to be effective. So we need to agree a number of things in advance. Our crisis strategy needs to be based on the values of our organization. What's the ethos? What are we trying to get our audiences, and there will be multiple of them, our stakeholders, to perceive of us? Are we being open and honest and showing our integrity and our communication? Um, are, on the flip side, are we being disruptive and difficult to get hold of? Are we closing the doors and, and putting our hands up and saying no comment? So the crisis strategy has to be based on what we want to achieve, what we want to show um, to our publics, to our stakeholders. So getting it right requires planning, 
time, some difficult decisions that are going to have to be made in doing that. And fundamentally, a senior response. It has to be led from the very top with the right skill sets and behaviours to drive that crisis strategy, not just in the boardroom, but throughout the entire organisation, both in the escalation to more senior management and in the delegation of tasks to make those strategic goals happen. A crisis strategy cannot be determined at the time of a crisis. So we have to look at these things well in advance and take some of those key decisions about how we want to be perceived. And that perception should be based on what ethos, what values we want to drive out through our response. Because we want our stakeholders, the consumers, our customers, our suppliers to get from us a perception. We want them to understand our values, our ethos. Are we being open and honest? Are we showing our integrity and our communication skills to be able to, to show them all the efforts we're going to in solving the crisis uh, and, and resolving their problems because they will be suffering as well? We can't therefore decide something on the fly, on the hoof, when it happens because we won't be making the right decisions for our organization.